We've looked at supply and demand, price and quantity equilibrium, and identified the areas of consumer and producer surplus. Just to review, this is price equilibrium in this autarky market for sugar. And autarky just means that this market is currently closed to trade. Uh, all the supply and demand is produced and consumed domestically. And this is the equilibrium quantity. So you should be able to identify this triangle right here as the area of consumer surplus, okay, and this area down here as the area of producer surplus. Okay, so those are our starting points. Um, and if this is a perfectly competitive market, uh, we would say that it's allocatively efficient. But I'm going to erase those for a moment so we can see what happens if this market's actually open to trade. Okay, so if this market's open to trade, there are two possibilities. One is that the world price is going to be lower than the domestic price or the autarky price. The other possibility is that the world price is actually going to be higher. Um, we're going to deal with the, the first scenario first because it's probably more likely that the world price is going to be lower if other countries have already been engaging in, in free trade of this commodity. So we're going to uh, represent the world price with this line right here. Okay, so I'm just going to call this one PW, and we're going to see what the implications are for consumer and producer surplus, and also how we can illustrate imports on this particular graph. So if we look at this, the first question we want to ask ourselves is how much are domestic consumers buying now? And this graph, okay, with this line looks a whole lot like we've suddenly imposed a price ceiling, right? Like we've said, oh, the price can't go above this. Looks a lot like that graph but that's not what it is, okay? It is not a price ceiling. What it is is a lower price that is now actually available to the domestic consumers. So the, the crossing of this world price with the demand curve in this country, the intersection here is what's gonna tell us how much domestic consumers are now going to be able to purchase, okay? So the quantity demanded by domestic consumers is right here. We know that domestic producers are not willing to produce that much at that price because at that quantity, right, they would need a much, much higher price right up here. So how much are they willing and able to produce? Well, we have to look at how much they were willing and able to produce at this price, and that is this amount over here. Okay, this is um, how much will be supplied by domestic manufacturers now. So Domestic consumers are buying QD, but domestic manufacturers are only producing QS. So, is this a shortage? It kind of looks like one, but it's not. Because rather than just being stuck where the consumers want something, but, but nobody's willing to produce it, there are a lot of producers in other countries who actually are willing to produce it. So this, QD minus QS, is the size of imports. Okay, that's the size of imports. This distance from QEQ to QS, this distance in between these two, this represents the loss of production domestically or the loss of jobs, okay, which is, is felt, right, very hard by the uh, domestic producers. They're very unhappy about it because there were a lot more people employed, actually twice as many in this industry before the industry was opened up to trade. So you can see from this, just looking at it so far that the consumers are probably happier. A lot more of them are buying sugar. That's the good that I chose for this because it's actually pretty realistic. A lot more of them are buying sugar and they're paying a lot lower price for it. But the producers are pretty unhappy because they're getting a lower price and they had to lay off half their workforce. Let's remember that the original producer surplus, I'm sorry, consumer surplus was this triangle here. Okay, what happened to the consumer surplus now? If you look at this graph, you can tell Wow, this all, okay, this whole area now is consumer surplus. Okay, so we can actually measure the increased level of satisfaction for consumers on the graph. Okay, that's a huge amount of consumer surplus. Producer surplus has shrunk to this little triangle down here. Okay, there are a lot fewer producers who are gaining any benefit in this market. And then it's important to note that we've actually added a triangle, right? This triangle right here this big triangle here is added, okay? We would call that an addition to society's welfare because that is surplus that didn't exist before. Now, if we look at this very simple graph, 
it certainly implies that as a society we are better off. There's more total welfare than there was before we had trade. However, it really favors the consumers over the producers. So it's not just a wash. It's happier consumers, really unhappy producers, right? And those producers are pretty likely to lobby for some trade barriers. Um, and I'll just briefly show you kind of how those trade barriers work. Um, if they, we are able to impose um, either a quota or a tariff, the graph would look the same. Okay, if we impose a quota or a tariff, we're basically going to have another line somewhere in here. Okay, this would be a quota or tariff that um, increases the price, right? And the distance between these two lines is the size if it's a tariff. Okay, the quota would be the distance right here. Okay, the, that would be the quantity that's allowed to be imported. So right here would be a relatively modest um, tariff or a relatively generous quota. A lot is allowed, allowed to be imported. Um, right here, you know, we're basically cutting off trade again. If you put a tariff this high, then it's just, you know, irrelevant because nobody will be importing the good. Um, so let's put it right here kind of in the middle, and we'll say this is going to be the new price with a tariff or quota in place. We're just going to call it T, a price with a tariff. And you can see that what happens now is that the consumer surplus is larger than it was before trade, right? The consumer surplus now is this. Okay, so consumers are better off than they were when they had no trade at all, where it was right here, okay, but they're worse off than when there was free trade, all right? So it's kind of a middle ground. The producers, of course, are somewhat better off, right? Because the producer surplus has actually grown. Is society itself better off or worse off? Society itself is worse off because we lost this section, right? And this is um, actually not entirely all true, okay? This, this is, would all be lost if there was a quota. If there's a tariff in place, interestingly enough, because this is the size of the tariff, okay, this distance between these two prices, and this is the quantity imported, this area right here is actually government revenue. So it's really just these two little triangles that are lost when you impose a tariff. They're completely lost to society because the, the government revenue is actually part of our societal welfare. All right, um, that's, that's basically a picture of how a quota or tariff works. The, um, if you use a subsidy, which is another form of uh, trade restriction, what you're doing actually and I'm going to have to, I guess, get rid of the, the, uh, this line to so kind of reduce confusion. Um, what a subsidy does is it actually is a payment to domestic producers. So it actually shifts the domestic line to the right. Okay, and what happens then is, I'm going to put a little S1 here, or S, S, because it's S with a subsidy. Okay, this line actually changes things in a little bit different way because now, our domestic consumers are still able to buy this amount okay, that they were able to buy with open trade, but now a larger amount of it, all the way over here, is being supplied by domestic manufacturers. So what a subsidy does is it, it, it pushes the price, um, it pushes the supply curve to the right so that the domestic manufacturers are better able to compete and the number of imports actually is reduced. So is this good? Is this a win-win? It looks like it. It looks like we've got the same size of consumer surplus that we had before. That's wonderful news, right? Uh, producer surplus is actually going to be a bit larger, right? Because they are now going to be producing basically, I can't really draw it very well here because it doesn't go to, to the y-axis, but they're going to have a much larger producer surplus. But the problem is that all of this money that's involved in this surplus, okay, this is the size of, sorry, that's involved in the subsidy, um, this is coming from your tax dollars, right? Your tax dollars are being collected and given to this manufacturer, and so it's actually, there's a cost to the society. So it's not all as good as it looks. All right, briefly, one more thing, and I'm not going to take this through the whole same scenario, but I just want to show you what happens if the world price is actually higher than the domestic price. So let's imagine for a second that the world price is up here. Um, it seems unlikely, right, that you open yourself up to trade and, wow, <laughs> people elsewhere are willing to pay more for this. But it actually has happened in a lot of countries, in particular uh, places like Guatemala and Honduras, right? In Guatemala, they grow avocados and they basically export them all because 
the domestic price is so much lower than the world price that it's it's better for the farmers just to to send them all away. So what happens here, of course, if the world price is higher is that this quantity is being supplied right by your domestic manufacturers, but your domestic consumers can only afford just a little bit. So all the rest of this becomes exports. And the producer surplus, as you can imagine, is enormous, right? The producers are really happy. The consumer surplus becomes very solid because they can no longer afford to eat. Uh, I guess they're not, it's not always food, can no longer afford to consume um, the product that's being produced.